A few months ago, my parents mentioned knee paints when kneeling down to put on their shoes. So this is my Christmas gift to them, and here's how I built it. Instead of boring you with the whole process of me breaking down the lumber for the build, let's talk about the design of the case real quick. What makes this bench stand out is the taper left panel that joins the top and bottom panels with miter joints, which means the top panel will start out wider than the bottom panel on the left side, but then about halfway down the length of the bench, it tapers down to the same width as the bottom panel. And finally, two vertical panels will sit in dados to complete the case. And more on why I didn't use another panel with miter joints for the right side when we get to that point of the build. After the lumber was milled down to thickness and the edges squared up on the jointer and table saw, I started the panel glue up. I used the domino here, but it's certainly not needed. In fact, I actually advised against it for this build. The reason being, it's easy to forget where the tenons are and then cut through them when cutting the tapers later. But what I do think is important is to have a few sets of calls on hand to help to keep the panels nice and flat during the glue up. The next day, I removed the panels from the clamps and then used a scraper to clean up the glue squeeze out from the seams. And then I was ready to cut the panels to size. Both the top and bottom panels will receive a vertical cut on one end and a 45 degree miter on the other, while the left panel will receive miter cuts on both ends. To finalize the width of the panels, I find that it's easiest to cut the taper on the left panel first and then use that to finalize the width of the top and bottom panels. So that's what you see me doing here. I first cut the tapered edge on the right half of the top panel with my track saw blade set at 90 degrees. I'm mentioning the blade angle because the blade will need to be tipped at an angle that matches the taper on the left panel for the rest of the cuts to ensure that the left, top, and bottom panels will match up. If I'd made the right panel the same way as I did the left, it'd be really difficult to get this corner to come together since the taper on the top panel will introduce a third angle to the mix. This was precisely why I made the right panel into a vertical partition instead. Once everything looked good, I moved on to cutting some stop dados with my router for the two vertical partitions. With the top and bottom panels butted up against each other, I could lay out where the dados need to be and then make all the necessary cuts in both panels at the same time and ensure that they'll line up. If at any point you've got questions about this build, feel free to leave them in the comments below or DM me on Instagram at bevelish underscore creations. I'd be glad to help out. One thing to keep in mind with cutting these particular dados is that since the top panel is wider than the bottom panel, the cut in the top panel should end up further away from the front edge than the one cut on the bottom panel. And I totally forgot about this, so here I am making repairs. Luckily, this was on the bottom face of the top panel, so nobody will ever know unless they watch this video. And since I don't think my parents watch my videos, I think I'll be good. And with that half inch bit still on my router, I cut a quarter inch rabbit along the back edge of my pieces for accepting a back panel later. And to add just a little bit more style to the bench, I swapped out for a chamfer bit to add a bevel along the front edges of the panels. With all the joinery cut, it's time to glue the case together. I use dominoes as I always do to reinforce the miter joints. And since the height of the vertical partitions isn't finalized yet at this point, I use the piece of plywood to hold up one end of the top panel while I assemble the other end. After which, I could then determine the height of the vertical partitions and then cut them to size at the table saw. And I also cut a notch on both ends of the front edges to allow the partitions to hide the rounded ends of the stop dados in the top and bottom panels. Then, at the router table, I laid out and cut a set of stop dados in them for holding a horizontal shelf later. And with all the pieces for the case finished, I guess I got a little too excited for the glue up and this happened. I'm no expert, but my advice is to always have some paper towel around for when premature squeeze out happens to you. 
Oh yeah, before I forget in the midst of all this excitement, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch my video. And if you're enjoying it, let me know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell to stay on top of all of my videos. It would really go a long way in helping me grow this channel. So thanks again. Before gluing in the quarter inch back panel, I applied some dark walnut stain to the back. For some reason, these quarter inch walnut plywood always have one side that's really light. And even though that side would be against the wall where nobody would see it, I always felt it's incomplete if I just left it that way. With the case complete, I got to work on the drawer boxes. And you may not agree with me when I say this, but I really felt that the side-mounted drawer slides I normally use would just cheapen the look of this bench. So I opted for some bottom-mounted drawer slides. And honestly, I don't think I can clearly explain the process of how to install these while still keep the video focused on building this bench. So I will just throw up a link to the awesome video that Sean Boyd made if you want all the details. I did a couple things slightly different from his video, like using a router table to cut a notch for the slide and using a store-bought jig to help me drill the holes, but the end result's the same. And with the top set aside, I began to work on the legs. I set my miter gauge to make a cross cut at 15 degrees on both ends of the stock. This will be the angle that the legs will stand at. And then I laid out a taper going from 1 inch at the bottom to 3 inches at the top, and then lined it up to the edge of my crosscut sled to make the cut. And of course this can be done using a tapering jig as well, but I was too lazy to keep swapping things out, especially since I needed to use my sled again to make a 15 degree cut on the ends of the two stretcher pieces to match the outer angle of the legs. Afterwards, I placed the stretchers on my case to lay out the angled cross lap joint used to attach them. And to make the cut, I swapped my blade out for my dado stack, and then lined things up to my layout lines and made the necessary passes to get a nice tight fit. The legs will attach to the stretchers using bridle joints. This joint is actually fairly easy to make as long as you take the time to mark things out properly. And since it's much easier to cut tenons to fit the mortise, I like to always start out by cutting the mortise on the legs first. And to cut the tenons in the stretchers, I lined up my layout lines to my blade and locked the angle down using my miter gauge. Then I took multiple passes to sneak up on the thickness of the tenon. There should be enough material left so that after cleaning up the saw marks with my hand plane, the joint will still come together nice and snug when glued up. Also, notice that the stretchers and the legs both sit proud of each other. This was done so that I could flush everything up with a flush trim saw after assembly instead of trying to sneak up on the fit at the table saw. And while I'm getting the legs attached, I want to take this moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Tools Today. They not only have a huge assortment of industrial grade cutting tools, including all the router bits and saw blades I used in this build, they've also got a very knowledgeable staff who are always there ready to help. So head over to their website and check them out. The last thing left to do on this bench is to make the drawer fronts. And to keep this whole angular, asymmetry design of the bench, I decided to go with a 3D polymetric shape and carved it on my CNC. I won't go into too much detail in this video with how I designed and carved this because the process needs a video all on its own. And that's exactly what I did in a video I posted a couple months ago. I'll throw up a link right here if you're interested to see how I did it. And I think that video really provides a lot of value for anyone who's new to CNC, interested in diving into 3D carving, or on the fence about getting a CNC. So take a look and let me know what you think. I also want to mention real quick that I deliberately carved the drawer fronts about an eighth inch longer on each edge so that I could finalize the size afterwards. This gave me the freedom to tweak the drawer fronts to get the right fit. And obviously I'm not going to add drawer pulls to these drawers, so I used a quarter inch radius bowl and tray bit at the router table to cut a finger groove along the back edge of the work pieces. But unfortunately, due to the thickness of the drawer fronts along that edge, the finger grooves weren't quite as deep as I would like. They were enough to get a hold of the lip and pull the drawers open, but just not as ergonomic as I hoped. If I was able to do this over again, I'd probably redesign the polygons to leave more material along the right edge of the panels to allow for some deeper finger grooves. 
But other than that small change, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And not only do I think this will look great in my parents' house, it feels great knowing that I made something that will make their lives a little easier. And they actually have no idea that I made this for them, so I hope they'll really like it. If not, well, then I guess they're in for an ugly surprise when they come back from their vacation.